This video is going to be an informal introduction to the central limit theorem. Here's an outline of what this video will contain. We'll start with reminding you that random variables show up in patterns, and we call those patterns distributions. We'll then uh, start thinking about the sample mean as a random variable. With those two ideas combined, we will make an informal statement of the central limit theorem, and then we'll see what the idea behind the central limit theorem looks like with an example in R. Let's get started. Suppose we have capital N random variables that are independent and identically distributed following the exponential distribution with parameter lambda. We don't have to know what lambda is right now. When we say that these data follow the exponential distribution, what we mean is they will show up in a pattern that is dictated by the density function. Here, down at the origin of the graph, we will observe much more data than we will off to the right of the graph. In this case, this is the pattern as described by the density function that the data will show up in. So if we had all of these data and then we added them up and divided by however many there are, that is, we calculated the sample mean, we should begin thinking of the sample mean as a random variable. If you imagine that a random variable is a variable whose value you don't know until it's observed, and then you had n variables whose value you don't know until they're observed, as long as you could mathematically write those values down such that you could add them all up and divide by however many there are, then the sample mean is a singular value, is a singular variable whose value you don't know. This entire quantity here is a variable whose value you don't yet know until it's observed. Because you don't know the value of this one variable until it's observed, it is a random variable. And we just explained that random variables follow distributions, they follow patterns. Well, the question that the central limit theorem answers is, what type of distribution does the sample mean as a random variable follow? Well, here comes our informal statement of the central limit theorem. The sample mean is a pro whoops, got to write out all my words here. The sample mean is approximately normal. That is, the sample mean approximately follows the normal distribution as the sample size, capital N, goes off to infinity. That is an informal statement of the central limit theorem, but I think it's going to be easier to visualize what this statement means in an example in R. So let's keep with the exponential distribution, and we'll keep with the idea that we sample capital N observations, and from those capital N observations, we collect one random variable, the sample mean. The only trick, as we'll see in R, is obtaining multiple sample means so that we can approximate visually the distribution of the sample mean. So here we go. In R, I'm going to start by loading the library ggplot2 because I will want to make some plots. And then I'm just going to say, let's sample 
a sample mean from the exponential distribution. So we will create an integer for our sample size and then we will randomly sample data from the exponential distribution, sample size n, and we will choose a parameter lambda. I'll choose the value 2 because I know if I choose the value for lambda 2, then the mean of this distribution will be 1 over 2, which we can see by estimating the sample mean using just the data from our sample x. And we should get something close to 0.5. Indeed, we do. Now, it's going to be helpful for us later to be able to visualize the population from which we sample data, that is the exponential distribution. So here is a plot estimating the density function for the exponential distribution using only the data contained in our sample stored in the vector x. As we can see from the plot, the exponential distribution is in fact quite right skewed. Remember the word skew describes the tail of the distribution. And because the tail for this exponential goes off to the right, this is right skewed data. Now what we're going to want to do in order to visualize the distribution of the sample mean is sample many, that is let's choose a value, capital R, sample means. We would like to sample, let's say 501 sample means. Well since we already have the code to sample a single mean, all we need to do is wrap that code into a for loop remembering to pre-allocate a vector before we store all the sample means that we want. Now, the idea of the central limit theorem is with few limits on what the original population, that is exponential here, distribution looks like, with few requirements on what the original population distribution is, the central limit theorem is telling us that this vector of sample means is going to look normal. We could put all of those sample means into a data frame such that we could then estimate using only the sample means the density function of them and indeed what we see is an approximately normal looking distribution centered at what we discussed earlier was the true population mean of the original exponential distribution. What's impressive about the central limit theorem here is that despite the fact that the original population is strongly right skewed, the distribution of the sample mean still looks approximately normal. The central limit theorem is a phenomenon about random variables that says with very few restrictions on the population from which we sample, if you calculate a sample mean from your data, that sample mean will tend to follow, as a random variable, that sample mean will tend to follow the normal distribution so long as your sample size is sufficiently large. And in fact, it's a statement about your sample size going off to infinity, although you can see the approximation is quite good for even a sample of 1,001 observations.